Welcome to the workshop. I'm very pleased to introduce you to our new linear actuator. It's a heavy duty actuator that you can use for all your heavy load actuator needs. The linear actuator is a result of a project uh, work together with a student called Methodi. He has made the basic design and then Rasmus has finished up all the details. So we now have a really nice and fully finished product that we today will assemble so you can see how it works. We have the stepper motor, we have the ball screw uh, system here and in between here uh, inside the C-beam we also have room for limit switches so you can have up to two limit switches inside and you have the option of having wires coming out at the motor end or the other end whatever fits your purpose. Let's just see how it works. We have it connected to a black box and a computer and we can go some increments here and it is really able to go pretty fast uh, if you need that like this Rasmus he will now show you how to assemble the linear actuator in the first step we will assemble the linear guides to the C-beam there are multiple ways of doing this what I like to do is to put this, put the linear guide on the edge of the table like this. Then I'll grab my screwdriver and my screws. And then I'll start inserting the screws while holding the T-nuts on the back. And when we insert these, we just want to twist the screw one or two times to ensure that the T-nut is not inserted too far onto the screw. On this, it will be easy to now slide the linear guide onto the CD. And I'm just using the, my bottom hand to align the T-nuts with the slot. Now we have to adjust the length or the distance between the edge of the C-beam and the edge of the linear guide. And when adjusting this length, I like to just tighten this screw just a little bit. Now we need to align one of the linear guides with the C-beam. We use our alignment tool and insert it here. Now I can tighten it to this side. I'll just loosen up this again. Tighten up this screw instead. Then I'll tighten the alignment tool. Now I can see that the linear guide is able to be moved sideways. And I can uh, hold it up against the alignment tool and tighten the first screw. Now I can move the alignment tool to the next screw on the linear guide. Now I'm able to loosen this screw, which I tightened before. Now I can again move the linear guide and I can push it up against the alignment tool and tighten this screw. And now I can move the alignment tool in increments. I can start out by moving, uh, skipping past one screw or maybe even two screws for longer linear guides in one and a half meter lengths. So now I'll just move it past one of the screws. And I'll tighten it. And I'll push the linear guide against the tool again. And now we assume that this part of the linear guide is aligned. 
And now this linear guide has been aligned. And then the, this linear guide is still constrained by this screw, so this distance is, is kept. But we will align this linear guide with this using the top plate later. In this step we are going to install the top plate onto the linear guide blocks. When working with the linear guide blocks, it's very important to keep the plastic piece inside of it when it's not installed on the rail. This means that there's always something keeping the, these, all of these balls inside of the linear guide blocks so they don't fall out. At this point we have to keep in mind where our distance was adjusted in the previous step. In my case, this is where I adjusted the distance. When I installed, installed my linear guide blocks, I installed them this way. Make sure to keep the plastic piece inside of the linear guide block, and now I can slide it onto the linear guide. Now we can start installing the top plate. In this case we have to uh, have these holes pointing towards the end where we adjusted the distance. When inserting these screws, I will fasten them on the fixed end. So it, in my case it is this end where we fasten the linear guide. And I will now fasten the four screws to the linear guide block. Now I will insert the other four screws loosely. So I will not be tightening these. And again, there are many ways of aligning this linear guide relative to this other linear guide. But this is the way we are going to do it today. Now I am ready to unscrew this and now I can move this back and forth while holding the linear guide so that we keep the distance over here. When we have moved the axis back and forth a little bit, we are ready to tighten the first screw over here. After tightening the first screw, this linear guide will still be able to rotate like this. but it is much easier for us to align the linear guide now. Now we can, because this distance has been defined now, we can tighten this screw. Now we can start moving the top plate and tighten this screw. And then we'll keep going. Be careful when moving the top plate. It's very important to not go beyond the edge of the linear guide with the linear guide blocks. Now we are ready to tighten up the last screws on the top plate. Now we have fully installed the top plate and we should be able to move it smoothly across the whole travel of the linear guides. It's just like this. Now we are moving on to step 3. I'll move the, the C-beam aside which I've been assembling on until now and I'll be working on the ball screw now. To start off I'll install the new bracket we have made for the ball screw. When installing this, I like to unscrew the ball screw almost all the way to the end. Again, being careful to not unscrew it all the way, because that will risk losing some of the balls inside of the ball nut, just like on the linear guides.
this point I'm ready to install the BK10 bearing block onto the ball screw. Make sure that the BK10 points in this direction. Now I'll install the, the preload nut. This nut preloads the bearings inside the BK10 bearing block, making sure that we have a backlash free assembly. There's no set way to, to adjust the tension with this nut, but I like to just grab my wrench. And then I'll grab the ball screw tightly with my hand like this, and then I'll crank it as much as I can hold on to the ball screw. If you need to install a limit switch, you'll have to do it this way. We have made a 3D printed bracket. Now we'll fasten the limit switch to the 3D printed bracket. And again, like with the linear guides, I'll just insert this T-nut just by turning the screw once or twice. Now we can slide it into the C-beam. And we can adjust the limit switch like we need. And we can put in a piece of slot cover to cover the wire. The wire will now exit here, out of the end plate. With the ball screw finished, we can now insert it into the C-beam. We'll start by mounting the bearing blocks to the end plates. When you mount these end plates to the bearing blocks, make sure that they point the correct way. And that includes the counterboards being on the outside. These screws will only be loosely attached so that we can move the bearing blocks around on the end plates. Now we are ready to install the end plates onto the CD. Again, this is the end where we adjusted the distance, and this is going to be the end with the BK10 bearing block, and also the end where the ball screw nut mount mounts to the top plate. In cases where we have a limit switch installed, we'll have to put this through the end plate. Like so. Now we'll carefully slide the linear uh, the ball screw into the C beam. We can also do it with the other bearing block. At this point we can tighten the end plates to the C beam. When tightening these, I like to to place them on the table like this to ensure that the bottom side is flush. Now I can just grab the end plate with my fingers like this to adjust it sideways. I'll do the same thing on the other side.
there are multiple ways to align the bolts group inside of this assembly, but this is how we'll be doing it. We'll start out by moving the top plate above the bolt screw nut mount, and then we can insert these screws and tighten them. Now we will move the top plate to either end and then tighten the bearing block. If everything is assembled correctly, we will not be able to back drive the ball screw by pushing the top plate like this. Now we are ready to fasten the bearing block in this end. I'll be using my ball and screwdriver to just fasten these two top screws. And now the bearing block is fastened to the, to the end plate. I can move it to the other side like this, and I can fasten it over here as well. Now I can tighten up the two lower screws on each bearing block. At this point I'm ready to install the motor. I'll start by putting the coupler onto the motor. I won't tighten it just yet. Now I'll insert these screws. Insert these distance pieces. Now I can slide the coupler onto the ball screw. Now I can start fastening the motor to the end plate. I just just do up all of these screws loosely and then tighten them in the end. Now I'm ready to tighten the copper. Now the actuator is finished and I hope you liked the video and it was able to help you assemble it.